Hello everyone, and welcome to the Stellaris Newbie Tutorial for War. I'm your host, Colors Fate. Now, I admit, the war mechanics in Stellaris can be confusing to new players. War in Stellaris is not a straightforward endeavor. Not a simple matter of saying, I want that Empire Systems, so I'm going to declare war and take them. If you've started playing the game already, you've probably discovered there's actually much more to it than that. Stellaris has a very formal system for declaring and waging war, and that system can make it confusing for new players to get a handle on how to go about waging war. But don't worry, we'll break it all down for you in this video. We'll cover all the basics, how to start a war, how to end a war, and several of the most common types of wars. By the end of this video, you should feel comfortable with the war mechanics of the game. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing to understand in Stellaris is how to initiate a war, and to do that you must understand the casus belli. You'll see this term a lot in Stellaris. This is a Latin term that means an occasion for going to war, or basically a reason for going to war. A casus belli is literally your reason for waging a war. In Stellaris, you cannot declare a war without first establishing a reason to do so. There are many possible reasons for going to war in Stellaris. You may want to impose your ideology on a neighboring empire, shifting their ethics closer to your own. You may want to claim their territory and take it for your own. You may want to subjugate the empire, make them a vassal underneath you, whereby they will pay tribute to your empire and provide ships during a time of war. Or you may simply want to end an existential threat to the galaxy. Not all reasons for going to war are available to all empires. The type of empire you are playing and their ethics and civics will determine which of these reasons you can use for declaring war against another empire. For instance, the hostile takeover Casus Belli is only available to empires that are megacorporations. Purification Casus Belli is only available to empires that are fanatic purifiers or determined exterminators. So, even though there are many different reasons for going to war in Stellaris, the reality is you will only ever have access to a few of these choices at any given time, and they will be determined and limited by your empire's civics and ethics choices. The other thing that I think is important to mention is the time sensitivity of some Casus Belli. For instance, the Purification Casus Belli is available to fanatic purifiers and determined exterminators at all times, since they want to purge the galaxy of other empires. They have the Purification Casus Belli on every other empire in the game at all times. This means that they can go to war with any empire anytime they choose. There are no constraints. Conversely, this also means that every other empire in the galaxy has the Containment Casus Belli against them and can wage war against purifiers and exterminators to end their threat to the galaxy. So, for instance, if you find yourself up against a fanatic purifier, like in this example, you'll note that we can go to war with them to end their threat to the galaxy. This is also known as containment, and this option is available to us at all times. We can use this Casus Belli whenever we like. The flip side of this is that some Casus Belli are time sensitive and can only be used within a limited window. An example of this is the Subjugation Casus Belli. This reason for war only becomes available for a limited time of one year after a failed diplomatic action. It works like this. The aggressor empire requests the target empire to become a subject, either a vassal, tributary, or subsidiary, depending on the aggressor empire type. And if the target empire declines this diplomatic request, then the subjugation Casus Belli becomes active for one calendar year. The aggressor empire then has that one year to declare war and try to achieve their war goals. We'll talk more about subjugation later in this video, because it's a very common and effective way to wage war for systems. For now, the point I want to illustrate is that some reasons for going to war in Stellaris can have a time component to them. They have a limited window to use, and if you do not use them within that window, they expire. Now that you know how to start a war, let's talk about how to wage one, and in particular, let's talk about war exhaustion. The first thing I want to point out about War in Stellaris is that at any point in time you can go to the diplomacy screen and you can see the status of the various wars across the galaxy. Aggressor empires are denoted with a pair of crossed swords, and defender empires are denoted with shields. At any point in time you can hover over these crossed swords and see which empires they are at war with. 
Now, when it comes to wars that your empire is engaged in, there will be icons in the bottom right hand side of the screen. There will be one for each war that you are involved with. Clicking this icon will open up the war exhaustion screen. The war exhaustion screen will show the number of attackers and defenders on each side involved in the war. But more importantly, it will also show the measure of fatigue and attrition for each side involved in the war. War exhaustion starts at zero for each side and gradually grows over time. As empires wage war, the attrition of losing soldiers, ships, and planets will wear on each faction involved in the conflict, causing their war exhaustion to increase until it eventually caps out at 100%. The important thing to understand is that when war exhaustion reaches 100%, the opposing side can force a status quo after 24 months, thus forcing an end to the war. War exhaustion is basically how Stellaris prevents wars from going on indefinitely when both sides are evenly matched and little progress is made. There are basically two aspects to waging war in Stellaris, capturing systems and capturing planets. When you initiate a war against an empire, the first thing that happens is the borders for each faction open up, changing from red to blue allowing for each faction's ships to traverse the systems and engage in war. This will allow your ships to invade the enemy's territory and vice versa. There are two types of systems in Stellaris, those with colonized planets and those without. Capturing an enemy system without any colonized planets contained within it is simply a matter of moving a fleet of your ships into that system and defeating the outpost. Once the outpost is defeated, it quickly rebuilds itself. The outpost and the system then fall under your control. You can tell when you've captured a system because your empire's logo will appear over the system with four little spikes on its edges. This signifies that you are in complete control of that system. Capturing a system with colonized planets requires a bit more work. Initially, when you move your fleet into the system and take the outpost, you will notice that your empire's logo now appears over the system, but it will be missing the four spikes at its edges. This signifies that your empire is in control of the orbital station in the system, but not the planets themselves. In order to conquer planets and take complete control of the system, you must successfully invade the planets with troops. Armies can be recruited on any of your own worlds by going to the Armies tab and selecting the Recruit button. Armies require minerals to build and have a maintenance cost associated with them. Once you have enough troops for a ground invasion, you can send your troop carrier to an enemy world in a system where you have already taken the outpost with your spaceships and tell your troops to land on the enemy planet. Troops will then engage in battle automatically. Successfully conquering all of the colonized planets in an enemy system will give you complete control of the enemy system as denoted by the spikes on the edge of your empire's logo. Now let's talk about how to end wars. The war exhaustion screen provides us with three ways to potentially end a war. First option that is always available is surrender. You are free to surrender to the opposing side at any time, even if you're winning. Surrender can mean different things depending on the casus belli that are used to start a war, and you should always take time to carefully read the conditions of a surrender option. In some cases, it can mean the end of the game for you if you choose it. However, in other cases, it can simply mean your empire suffers some penalties for a specific length of time. You may become a satrapy or a vassal underneath a stronger empire. Regardless of the specifics, surrender is always an option. One thing I want to mention about surrender, and I feel it's important to point this out, especially to new players, is that sometimes it is the best option for keeping your empire alive. In the case of marauder empires or fallen empires, they can be much stronger than you when you first encounter them. Sometimes the best option is simply to submit and surrender instead of getting destroyed. Becoming a satrapy or vassal underneath a superior opponent is not the end of the world. It can buy you time, which you can then use to research technology and build stronger fleets. Eventually, you can initiate war to win back your independence. You'll pay a steep tax to stay alive this way, often giving up a portion of your energy credits to your overlord or taking penalties to mineral production and the like. But the important thing is that you stay in the game. Surrender doesn't have to mean the end of a campaign, it can be just a temporary setback. The second option I want to talk about is achieving war goals. This option is available on the bottom left hand side of the war exhaustion screen. 
This means the other side capitulates to your demands completely, giving you 100% of what you asked for when you started the war, as decreed by the cast of Spelly you used to initiate the war. You will notice in this screenshot that the option to achieve war goals is a red X next to it. This means that if you send a diplomatic message to the opposition and attempt to end the war this way, they will reject it and the war will continue. You will know you can achieve an end to the war this way when the red X changes into a green check mark. A word of warning, however, achieving 100% of your war goals is often very difficult, as it usually requires completely conquering every system and planet owned by the opposition. This means if you're fighting two or three empires joined together in a war against you, either because they share a defensive pact or are in a federation together, in order to achieve your war goals, you will generally need to conquer all the systems and planets for every opposing empire involved in the conflict. In addition, you will generally need the opposition's war exhaustion to be at 100% fatigue in order to force this sort of an end to the war and get what you want. This sort of total victory is very difficult to pull off in my experience. It can be done, but it's not easy. Fortunately, there's a third option, the status quo. This is the middle option at the bottom of the war exhaustion screen. Achieving a status quo is almost always easier than a conquest victory, and it can often still give you exactly what you want. To borrow a line from the Chronicles of Riddick, the status quo in Stellaris basically means you keep what you kill, or in this case, you keep what you conquer. It specifically means that the way things are right now, at this minute, is the way things will be if this war is ended immediately. Whatever systems and planets each side possesses at the time the war ends will remain in their possession. Now, there is a caveat to this. In order to keep any systems and planets that you may have conquered up to this point using a status quo finish, you first need to either lay claims to an enemy's systems or be using the containment cast of Spelly, which grants you the right to take whatever you want from an imminent threat to the galaxy. But we'll get into that in more detail later in the guide. Now, before we continue, I want to emphasize one aspect of War in Stellaris that is very important to grasp, and that is claims. There are basically two types of wars in Stellaris. Wars where claims don't matter, and wars where they do. Purification wars and containment wars fall under the first kind of war. Claims don't matter in these wars. You are playing a fanatic purifier or determined exterminator, then you do not need to claim territory prior to taking it. You can just start a war and the systems you capture and colonies you invade automatically become yours when the war is over. Conversely, if you're playing defense against one of these aggressor types and seeking to contain them, then you will automatically win their territory and keep it when you take their systems and invade their planets. Wars without claims are pretty straightforward, however, they are limited by the types of empires involved. For the vast majority of other wars, you will need to make use of claims first. For wars that don't involve purification or containment, claims allow you to keep enemy territory and planets that you successfully capture during a war. It is really important to understand this point. If you do not claim a system before a war ends, you will not retain that system when the war is over. It will revert back to its original owner. This is one of those gotcha moments that stings a lot of new players to Stellaris. They initiate a war, capture several enemy systems, and then settle for a status quo thinking they're going to keep those systems. But when the war is over, those systems revert back to their opponent. They immediately get frustrated and wonder what did they do wrong? Well, the answer is they didn't claim any systems before the war ended. This is why, when you're planning for certain types of wars, like humiliation war or a claims war, you must first lay claim to enemy systems. Claiming systems is done by opening the claims window and spending precious influence points to claim systems. It's important to note that the farther an enemy system is from one of your own systems, the more influence it will cost to claim that system. So, when you claim systems, claim the closer ones first. The cost of claiming systems can be very expensive in terms of influence. However, you can reduce this cost with certain ethics, civics, and some research tech. 
It's also worth noting that claiming systems before you initiate a war is cheaper than after you have started the war. Once you have started a war, you can still claim additional systems while the war is ongoing. However, if you were the aggressor and instigated the war, the cost of these claims will be twice as expensive. So it's a good idea to make as many claims as you can before the war begins. Now that we've covered how claims work, let's discuss some of the wars that use them. First type of war you're likely to encounter will be the result of a humiliation casuspelli. This war scenario is basically the game's equivalent of the school bully threatening you for your lunch money. This type of war may or may not involve claims. If no claims are made by either side prior to the end of the war, then only two things happen. First, some influence is exchanged. 100 influence is subtracted from the loser and given to the winner. Second thing that happens is that the loser of the war is subjected to an animosity penalty, which is nothing more than a small penalty to empire happiness. This penalty lasts for 10 years. Now, if claims are involved, then those claims can be enforced by the victor when the war is concluded. The important point I want to make about the Humiliation War is that the default penalties are not that bad. If you find yourself the target of this type of war early in a game, before you can successfully defend yourself, you might want to consider surrendering immediately before the war is allowed to play out, especially if your opponent has laid claims to any of your systems. If you surrender early, or your opponent has a chance to invade the systems they have claimed, then you won't lose anything more than 100 influence points and suffer a light unhappiness penalty. You won't lose any systems or planets, and that's the important thing. Claims wars are one of the most prominent types of wars in Stellaris, and while claiming systems is optional for a humiliation war, they are the essence of the claims war. We've already discussed the mechanics of how to claim systems, so I won't go over that again. What I will discuss, however, is how to efficiently win a claims war. In order to win a claims war, all you have to do is conquer the systems you've claimed and invade the colonized planets in those systems. Then you need to push your opponent's war exhaustion just enough to force them to accept the status quo peace agreement. Successfully invading planets, destroying enemy fleets, capturing systems all contribute to war exhaustion. Time is also a factor. The longer a war goes on, the more fatigued each side will become. If you can increase your opponent's fatigue enough, they will capitulate. At that point, you can offer them the status quo peace and they will accept. When the war is over, you will gain control of the systems and planets you claimed prior to the war, and they will become part of your empire. Then, a white peace will ensue between you and your enemy that will last for 10 years and prevent another immediate war. The point I want to emphasize about a claims war is that you do not need to completely conquer your enemy in order to achieve your objectives. You simply need to control the systems you've claimed. Once your opponent's war exhaustion reaches a high enough level, the status quo peace offer will get you the victory. The final type of war I want to cover in this guide is the subjugation war. We mentioned this briefly earlier in this guide, but I feel it warrants a bit more depth. A subjugation war is kind of like the octagon. You want your opponent to submit. This is a type of conquest war, and claims are not necessary. In a subjugation war, you want to conquer your enemy completely, and then impose a specific kind of rule over them. Or, in other words, you want to make them a subject of your empire. As an added bonus to a subjugation war, certain subject empires can later be fully integrated into your empire, thereby turning all of their systems and planets over to you. Integrating a subject empire is a far more efficient and effective way of claiming large swaths of space for your own. It's far more effective than trying to put together multiple piecemeal claims wars with long stretches of white peace in between them. So if you're looking to take over a large empire, subjugation war is the way to go. There are many different types of subject empires in Stellaris, and the Wikipedia does a good job of enumerating. I recommend you refer to the Stellaris Wikipedia when you have questions, as it's a pretty good reference for the game. For now, I just want to discuss the most common types of subject empires that new players are likely to encounter. As discussed earlier in this guide, a subjugation casus belli begins with a failed diplomatic request. 
you first have to request for an opposing empire to become your subject, either a vassal, tributary, or other kind of subject empire. The vast majority of the time, the target empire will refuse this request because they want to maintain their independence, freedom. Once they refuse your request, you will be granted the subjugation casus belli for a period of one calendar year. From that point on, you'll have 12 months to declare war on them. The most important thing to understand is what each type of subject empire provides to your empire in terms of both resources and integration opportunities. Tributaries are subject empires that more or less remain independent from you and simply provide you with tribute in the form of energy credits. They will not follow your empire into war, and in fact they will claim systems and continue to engage in their own diplomatic efforts with the other empires of the galaxy. The other important thing to note about a tributary is that they cannot be integrated into your empire. A tributary is a decent choice for a subject empire if you don't plan on integrating them later, don't care about having their support during a war, and you simply want a few extra energy credits. Vassals, on the other hand, are more like true subject empires. They cannot claim systems on their own or engage in diplomacy with other factions. They will follow you into war and provide fleets of their own during such engagements. And the most important part of a vassal, after they have been your subject empire for 10 years, you can integrate them into your own empire. This generally costs a lot of influence and takes several years to accomplish, but in the end, the subject empire will disappear and all of their systems and worlds will become yours. In my experience, vassals are the most effective way to conquer large empires. Turning an empire into a vassal is far easier to do than waging one claims war after another and trying to conquer an enemy in piecemeal fashion. If you really want to get rid of a big enemy empire and gain all of their systems and planets for your own, a vassal is a good way to go about accomplishing that goal. This concludes the newbie tutorial for war. Obviously this guide does not cover every war scenario in Stellaris. It's simply too big of a game for that. But what I have tried to do is cover the core war mechanics and the most common scenarios that new players are likely to encounter. I hope you find this guide useful and I hope it helps acclimate new players to the game faster. Now if you liked this guide please consider giving it a thumbs up and if you want to see more guides like this subscribe to my channel. A link to my Patreon is included in the description for this video and if you have a question or comment feel free to drop it below. I'm your host Colors Fade and thanks for watching.